Hi, everybody. How's everybody doing? Just getting you all logged in here, letting you all in the room. Hello, hello. I feel like I'm a little too tall, so let me adjust that. Don't laugh at me. It's probably going to do something weird. There we go. Now I feel like, hi. <laughs> I have questions I want to ask you guys. So I'm going to be very honest with you. I'm teaching a class at AGLA on Tuesday um, called Understanding the Legal Terms that Your Attorney Uses. So I just had a question for you guys. If you could think of any legal terms your attorney uses that you aren't too sure of the meaning of, let me know because help me help you. <laughs> um, I want to make sure that I'm giving good, solid information in the class that I'm teaching on Tuesday. So I know that a lot of times our attorneys use terms that we don't understand. Um, and they do that a lot, let's be honest. So I just wanna make sure that I'm covering those terms and making sure that you guys are getting what you need out of the class. So if you guys have any legal terms your attorneys used in the past that you just want clarification on or you think might be good for my class, please let me know. Um, so far I have explaining the breach of warranty to provide habitable premises, interrogatories, discovery, propounding discovery, motion to quash demur, right to quiet enjoyment, ex parte, OSC hearing, a notice versus a summons and complaint, a judgment and the writ, and a stipulation versus a settlement of agreement. Demur, okay, perfect. Um, a demur means that you have no reason to evict, just so you have a quick definition of what that means. Demure, demure, there we go, demure. Um, it basically, it means you have no reason to evict. A uh, reason that a legitimate demur would be used is if I was married, and this is just as an example, I'm clearly not, <laughs> okay. Um, if I was married and my husband and I were going through a divorce and both of our names were on title and he decided he wanted to evict me <laughs> because my name's on title, I would file a demur. He has no cause to evict. I'm an owner of the property. Make sense? That's when a demur would be legitimately used. It is not what it is legitimately used for now. It's a stalling tactic, let's face it, <laughs> right? Um, so just want to teach this class on Tuesday and make sure I'm putting a good front forward <laughs> and offering um, all the information that I possibly could. I just wanted to talk to you guys really quickly. I had a nice conversation with one of the attorneys um, earlier today about the difference between a settlement agreement and a stipulated judgment, okay? For those of you that are concerned, a stipulated judgment means you get judgment right now, okay? A stipulated judgment doesn't mean you lost, okay? It means you guys came to an agreement and that judgment is entered and approved by a judge in a court of law, okay? A settlement agreement uh, doesn't have as many teeth for us as landlords as a stipulated judgment does. Example, let's say I'm gonna stipulate and say, I agree not to lock them out for until blah, blah, blah date, okay, in the eviction, as long as they apply for the rental housing assistance as an example, okay? And they have to apply for assistance by a certain date. If we have a stipulated judgment in place, and the tenant does not comply by applying for the rental assistance by a certain date, we can actually submit a deck of non-compliance to the courts. And then they can, asking them that you defaulted by not agreeing, okay, or not complying with our stipulated agreement. And we can ask that um, we go to lockout, okay? If you're on a settlement agreement, we don't have a judgment entered, so we have to ask the court to enter judgment before we can issue the writ, yada, yada, yada. So if you are going to come to an agreement, a stipulated judgment has many more teeth than a settlement agreement as far as you're concerned, okay? <laughs> so just trying to give you guys a head up, a stipulated judgment helps you. It doesn't hinder you, okay? Just trying to make sure you guys all understand what a stipulated judgment is. 
Okay, what do you guys want to talk about today? Or are there any other terms you think that I need to go over in this class on Tuesday? Let me know, because I'm trying to cover as much as I can and educate you guys um, as much as I can. Affidavit and Liz Pendens. Okay, those are good ones. I will add those. Liz Pendens means that there's a lawsuit standing. I'm writing this down. And Liz Pendens. Liz pendants just means that there's a lawsuit pending. I'm letting people in, letting people in. We don't see a lot of those in residential evictions for Liz pendants liens. You usually see that more in commercial, but it does happen. I know, <laughs> I know, trust me. All right, what do you guys want to talk about today? I got information. Got off the phone with the Department of Fair Housing. We can now use walkability as a score and it not be considered discriminatory. Just don't use the word walking distance. That is discriminatory. Walkability score is not. Got it? Walkability is not discriminatory. It's actually the name of a business. Oh, you threw all kinds of stuff in there for me. Trustees deed, grant deed, quick claim deed. I got you. <laughs> it's more like real estate stuff, but I get it. I can do that. Um, <clears throat> yeah, how's everybody doing? <sighs> Lots of stuff I could tell you. Here we go. <clears throat> for the most part, <clears throat> Counties other than LA should go back to business as normal starting April Fool's Day. We have extensions in place in LA County um, specifically at this time. Uh, they extended tenant protections to the end of the year. AGLA, along with a few other apartment associations are trying desperately to sue <laughs> um, the County of Los Angeles for this extension since COVID just pretty much fell off the face of the earth overnight. Welcome to war, right? Um, COVID does not seem to be a threat anymore. Um, we just have a lot of people that are still trying to hold on to those coattails because it's gone. <laughs> okay, it vanished. <laughs> it disappeared. You gave Agla lawyers a statement yesterday, spot on, and thank you for that. Um, that really does help you guys when they get involved in these lawsuits. Um, Agla is desperately trying to help us by filing these suits against the city, the county, against these ludicrous moratoriums that are in place. I mean, it's kind of weird how all of a sudden everybody, and I mean everybody, got the Omicron variant, and then it just disappeared. Just say it. Steered our focus in a different direction, right? <laughs> okay. I'm trying to keep quiet so I don't get political, but yes, I would uh, go out on a limb to say that it was bureaucracy and bullshit at its finest. <laughs> and I can only begin to imagine what we'll see happening with this um, war. Um, I already know based on Desert Storm, and forgive me, but that's the last war I can remember being an issue, um, gas prices will go through the roof. That's a given. It's just what happens. I'm sorry your meeting is echoing. I didn't bring my microphone today, so that might be my fault. I hope that's not happening to everybody. Am I echoing? I don't want to echo. <laughs> Does... Okay, thanks, Val. <laughs> Does anybody have anything specific that they want me to talk about today other than the fact, and I said fact, that <laughs> less than 30 days from now, we should go back to business as normal in every county in Southern California, except for LA. April Fool's Day is the first time you can serve a notice to terminate tenancy without cause and it not be affiliated with COVID. 
Okay, I'll let you back in, Nick, I promise. You guys, should we let him back in? I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I'm feisty today. Watch out. <laughs> I missed the Agla webinar with Housing is Key. Did you attend? No, I missed it too. Did anybody catch that Housing is Key webinar with Agla on the 28th? I did not catch it. You did catch it, Arlene. What did you learn? Because I learned something just a few days ago, I wanna share with everybody. But if you wanna tell us what you learned, we would all be greatly appreciative. Um, I can tell you guys this, if you have an application pending with housing, oh, there's a replay online. Thank you, Arlene. Um, I could tell you this, if you have an application with housing, here's what I can tell you, okay? Go in there every month and add the new months. Um, I have landlords that applied way back in August and September, and they didn't go in and add October, November, December, January, February, March. So they finally got paid for two months, September and October, whatever two months they applied. They didn't go back in and readjust every month, adding in all the current months. So if you have an open case right now, just hear me out, go in there, <laughs> log in, and update to cover additional months from when you originally applied. If you only applied for September, October, they may only pay you for September, October. You need to go back in and add November, December, January, February, March, et cetera, okay? Just saying, a lot of people don't do that and then they get their check and it's for like two months and they're like, no. Okay, Nick, you're in, you're good. There is a replay online, everybody got that. And I am doing um, legal terms that your attorney uses and said in simple English for Agla. I believe that's on Tuesday. And get ready you guys, cause there's a lot of in-person stuff going on. It looks like I'm doing an in-person class in San Diego in April. I'm doing another in-person somewhere in March. It's starting to open back up, you guys. Um, we're going to start seeing each other in person, like real life, face to face. Um, Agla is doing their trade show in May. Um, I will be attending that. So I would love to see you all there. That'll be in Pasadena at the Pasadena Convention Center. Okay, Jay, Jay let me see what we got going on. To evict a tenant, how much back rent should be included? COVID period rent, recovery period rent, or post recovery period rent? I thought were different rules for different periods. Absolutely. Do you want my opinion? Because <laughs> I can't give you my advice. I'm not an attorney. Remember that. If I was going to evict right now for monies owed during the COVID pandemic, I would do it based on the three days. So that would be October, November, December, January, February, March. Okay. Um, the reality is a lot of courts are not issuing money judgments, especially in LA. Um, for rents owed during the COVID pandemic, they're issuing judgments for possession only. That being said, why waste the time getting all those documents in order and giving them all this ammo they can argue because if you mess up just one place, that's a problem. So keep it simple. That's what my daddy always said. So I just use the three day for the protected period, which is currently in place. And I just asked for rents most currently and go after that back rent where we're allowed to in small claims court, okay? I wouldn't be asking for all that rent in an eviction matter. If we're dealing outside of LA County, um, come April Fool's Day, if the rent is due on your contract on the 1st of April, the 2nd of April is the first time that it would be considered delinquent. So you could serve a regular three-day notice outside of LA County um, on April 2nd and then start eviction within four days later. Okay, so back to business as normal starting April Fool's Day outside of LA County. Inside LA County, they have tenant protections until the last day of this year. Someone is calling me. I am trying to hang up on them, you guys. How much should be included for the COVID rent period, recovery period? Okay, I hope I just explained that. So an eviction is not a place to go for the money that's owed to you, 
Okay, that's a false perception. Eviction is for possession, period, end of report. A money judgment, we used to be able to include in an eviction matter prior to COVID, and we'd get two for the price of one. In other words, we'd get a money judgment and a possession judgment in eviction court. Because of COVID, we're only seeing possession judgments, and you're having to go to small claims court to fight for the money. So why bring all that forward and put it in the judge's face if we're not going to get it anyway and we have to go to small claims? It just makes more sense just to do it on the most recent months and go after them um, in small claims court for the money judgment for all the money that's owed when the time arises. I saw you say something, Val. I'm trying to go back. One tenant was mad that I charged her late fees while she was waiting for housing funds, which she received, but I charged December through February late fees. I'm sure she is glad, but angry I took over $300 in late fee, Kern County, of course, sorry. Yes, starting October 1st outside of LA County, you can ask for late fees, October 1st of last year. My tenant will be protected until June 30th of 2023. Isn't it disgusting? And then I have all kinds of questions. Okay, so LA County, you increased tenant protections, but <laughs> are you increasing the funds available to landlords? Because I've heard no talk of that. That's something to think about. And all I could say is go Agla, go. And not just Agla, everybody that's suing the county, go, 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 because this doesn't make sense, okay? <laughs> if the money ends on March 31st and there will be no more funding, how are they extending tenant protections and not allowing us to evict for rent? This is me trying not to use foul language and cuss at our system when I'm so frustrated with it. It doesn't make sense. So instead of giving rent relief going forward, they're gonna do mortgage protection. Uh, I know, I know. They are not forgiving property taxes, they are not. They're not forgiving property taxes for us as landlords. <laughs> you guys don't get me started. It could get bad. Um, I'm actually already starting to work on my talk for the trade show in March <laughs> or in May of what I'm going to say. And they raised property tax. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. And they're still allowing people to come in this country and it's utilizing our resources. And there's a war going on that we're probably gonna put a toe in the pond because come on, let's face it, that's what we do. Um, yes, and I'm pretty sure that Brandon is um, right where he wants to be, right? Getting us in the middle of the shit show, if you will. Um, I will say this, uh, from what I've seen, and mind you, I don't um, actively watch the news, what I've seen of the Ukraine citizens standing up to what's happening to them. Go, go, go. Um, I mean, there's been stories of women feeding hungry soldiers laxatives and lighting their houses on fire to burn them up while they're all in there using our bathroom. I mean, there's been some interesting stories. A little old lady told a, sold, a Russian soldier, here's some sunflower seeds, put them in your pocket so that when you die, you know, flowers grow. I mean, go Ukrainians, because I, I tell you, if that was happening in our country right now and we were watching apartment buildings get bombed and children screaming, um, I can only begin to imagine what they're going through, number one. Um, number two, it just makes my heart ache. It, it, it's not... Mm, don't get me going. <laughs> don't get me going. It, it would be bad. <laughs> Deep breath, Patty. Focus. Um, challenges that I see for us in this upcoming year. And yes, I just diverted <laughs> tremendously. <laughs> Left turn. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. 
you all know that I will say what everybody wants to say and we can't say. <laughs> and I don't know, Val, I tend to make left turns when everybody else is making right ones. I don't want to go the same direction everybody else goes. I want to go the other way and see what's on that road. So I'm a left turn maker, not a right turn maker. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Um, I, I am extremely frustrated with what's going on, not only in our country, but in our world. You know, um, society has really done a number on us um, with legislations and restrictions, and it's going to get quite challenging um, now that we're in a position where we don't have easy access to a bunch of raw crude oil. Um, I believe our pipeline project was shut down. Um, I can anticipate that gas is going to go up tremendously. Um, somebody made mention to me, don't be surprised if it goes up to $10 a gallon. And my thought is, don't be surprised if half of the state of California starts walking. <laughs> I can see it now. There's people walking on the 405 freeway. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> Ah, uh, Val, you said you're trying to refinance. And my question is, is your tenant um, current on the rent? Because that could cause a problem. Yes, refinance now. Good, good, good analogy. Before it tanks. Uh, I'm going to read what you said, Melanie. Hey, hang on. I think we all feel the same frustration. And we want to curse and swear and kill the effers. Yes, we do. <laughs> LARSO, where do I go if our VA tenant application was approved and then denied by California COVID? The status of the application is application referred. No one at California COVID Rent Relief can explain what that means and where to go now. Oh my God, are you kidding me? They don't even know what it means. Okay. Um. Have you called, contacted VASH? That's um, Veterans Assistance Something Housing, V-A-S-H. They may be able to help. I was hoping to have that question on the webinar and finally the tenant is not communicating us. Luckily he moved out. Luckily he has moved out. Small claims court. You guys, for those of you that have tenants that vacated, they don't have any COVID protections. They vacated. You can start small claims now. If they're still in possession, the rules are a bit different, okay? But if they vacated, those rules are off the table. I hope that helps make sense. I'm like, okay, what other questions do you guys got? <laughs> What else could I tell you that's changing? And we're trying to stick with it. Uh, for the most part, our biggest battle right now is LA's extension of the tenant protections. It's ludicrous. The CDC just announced COVID is no longer a threat. What are we doing? Other than setting up landlords for failure, because that's what we're doing. extremely frustrating. You know, I hope that they come forth or they're more forthcoming with a bailout program for these landlords. Um, hold on. COVID is an excuse. COVID is an excuse for a lot of things to help tenants. Yeah. I get it. But to help them for so how long? We can't keep this up. Rents cannot keep inflating at the rate they're inflating. It can't keep going this way, folks. <laughs> we can't keep spending 22 bucks for a two by four. This can't keep going this direction. It isn't gonna work. <laughs> and I, what if gas goes up to $10 a gallon like by the end of the week? I mean, it could happen. <laughs> All I know is if we have paratroopers <laughs> parachuting into this country. <laughs> that would be me closing my mouth again. I was told it was a war crime to shoot a defenseless paratrooper that is invading your country. That's a war crime? Okay. 
somebody tries to invade us that way, I would think of it more like at the penny arcade and you're just trying to hit the moving target, right? <laughs> I just, I, the whole war thing just has me in a whole nother field. How could COVID go away overnight and everybody's focused on the war and gas prices and oil and crude oil and everything that's happening in China and Taiwan and uh, slow down. Let's fix what's going on right now. Let's get rid of this COVID moratorium if COVID seriously is gone, because I don't know if hospitals still having tents set up and other variants becoming a problem. It's like, seriously, this thing just disappeared. I know, I wanna say so much, you guys, but I'm really trying to keep myself together. I never, ever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I thought it was funny when Amazon was gonna have delivery by drones, okay? Because my kids said, oh, look, mom, skeet shooting with prizes. And I thought, oh, okay. No. It's not skeet shooting with prizes. We can't do that. <sighs> Only in my household. I'm sorry. We're a little off. Trying not to say too much about politics today. <laughs> I think we're all extremely frustrated. And a little bit, I'm, I'm feeling let down by our government. And I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I, I always felt, I was, I was always proud to be an American. You know, hey, I'm an American. I'm proud to be an American. I pay my taxes, you know, I do my, and now I'm like, what were we thinking? Flatten the curve for two weeks, turned into two years of hell. I mean, we have owners now that are in the midst of foreclosure and have no relief from rental assistance or anything else and can't get the tenant out. I mean, it's very frustrating. I almost want to say it's like we've been at war with ourselves for the last two years. It hasn't been fair. Trials aren't speedy. Whether or not they're fair is yet to be determined, but they're sure not speedy. We've lost our right to a speedy trial. I mean, it's so frustrating just to see that we've been dealing with this for two years. It's been a nightmare for us. And then it's just gone, 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 like a sunset, just gone. I will say that this pandemic has been eye-opening. It put me in an entirely different perception than I've been in the majority of my career thus far, um, knowing what powers they've had. I mean, we've always known there's been governmental powers. We've known that. <laughs> um, but I never thought that they'd be used against us. And, and, and some of us, a lady told me the other day, and I told her I was going to steal this. She goes, yeah, you're right. We're not all in the same boat, but we are in the same storm because apparently I'm in a canoe and I'm down to one paddle and I'm just going in circles. <laughs> and I thought, I can relate to that. I understand that. And it's true. I mean, some of us are cruising on a cruise ship. And we're kind of complaining a little bit, but we really haven't been affected by <laughs> the powers that be of this pandemic. And other of us are on a life raft or just down to a fun noodle at this point. Um, I'm seeing a lot of mistakes being made um, with tenants getting the rent relief and not the landlord. And I... Uh, It's so frustrating. I, if a tenant gets 50, 60, $70,000, that's start over money somewhere else for them. For a tenant, if they get 50 grand, that's enough money to reboot, reboot, reload and start somewhere else outside of the country even. 
Um, I, I wish I had all the answers. I really do, but I'm just as frustrated as, as the majority of us, you know, and all I can say is support Agla, fight with Agla. They'll make our voices heard. And it's any apartment association that's affiliated on a national level, usually as a PAC um, fund. And the PAC fund is what goes to help fight all of these laws and restrictions up in Sacramento. So I can't encourage that enough. Horrible that this crap will continue and get worse. I, I know. It makes me think this is a wealth transfer is the real agenda. Like these politicians are colluding to steal properties or have us lose our properties. Right on the nose, I couldn't agree with you more. It's like a setup for failure. But it's okay. The government assistance program, they'll help you. Yes, they will. Just sign up. They'll help you. They'll give the $60,000 owed to you right to your tenant. And then they'll pass a law that you can't evict them. <laughs> but they have your 60 grand. I wish I had all the answers. I wish I had all of it, you guys. But I, I too am frustrated, okay? I'm human. <laughs> I own investment property. I have skin in the game and I'm frustrated too. Um, and for the most part, here's what I could say for us that aren't suffering as, as hard as others. Some of us are really in a bad position. I talked to a lady yesterday. She rented a room in her house at the beginning of the pandemic because she knew there was a supply and demand issue and it was just her. So she had a spare room, she rented the room. Guy moved in, met all the criteria, has a good job. She rented to him. He stopped paying almost immediately. She's gone several, several months, almost a year and a half now um, without being able to evict him because she can't afford it. And he's asking for a jury trial. And she applied for the government funds and they gave the money to the tenant. He kept the money and is still living in her house, still going to work every day. It's ludicrous. It is ludicrous, <laughs> ludicrous what we can and can't do. And I'll give you guys a good example of why the courts are so inundated. It used to be that in an eviction matter that was uncontested, meaning the tenant didn't file an answer and they just were gonna go quietly into the night, that the court clerk could make enter in the judgment and have the writ issue because the other party failed to come forward and file an answer and we don't have to go to court. So the court clerk was able to do the default judgment and issue the writ. Because of COVID, the courts have changed their process and procedure. Clerks are no longer allowed to issue judgments. They have to be given to the judge and the judge has to go through, make sure everything's in order and then sign off on that. So that's causing a delay. We used to be able to submit the judgment and the request for the writ of possession at the same time. Now, because of COVID, we have to wait for judgment to be entered and then turn around and submit for the writ of possession. Otherwise, they'll just deny it and send it all back and say, you can't get a writ, you don't have a judgment yet. So by the court making these few little changes has caused a huge backup for all of us. Not to mention that they threw in that their application status, if you're evicting for non-payment of rent, needs to be entered before you can issue judgment and has to be one of four items of denied, non-responsive, inactive, or funds exhausted. That's the four things that we need at a law firm in order to get the judge to issue that writ of possession and the judgment on your behalf. We have to prove what your application status is. Yeah, I'm 
starting to think that I don't like the way any of that went out myself. I found an addendum to change occupancy. This is for the home where the main tenant is in jail and the pal that moved in just paid March's rent, which I have accepted. I have not sent the addendum yet because it asks if I'm releasing any tenants. You are not. You can't release the other tenant. The tenants have to release themselves. You don't want to release him. Keep the old guy, the jailbird, and the new guy all on the same contract. Let me explain something to you guys. And I might need a piece of paper to do it. And a pen. I'm drawing a picture, so bear with me. And I don't draw well. Oh, I can. It'll come out backwards. Okay, we're not going to draw. I live in a house. I rented a house. And my good friend Val, she's going to come move in with me and be my roommate. Okay, so now Val and I live in a house. And you know about it because I told you, you know, she's going to move in with me. She's my good friend. And Val and I are living there. And then Val takes off and she leaves and she goes and she's in a relationship somewhere else. But Val's name's still on the contract. Okay, so I decide that I'm going to put a new person in there. And now you have three people on the lease, but only two people in possession. So I moved in Joe. Joe's my friend. Um, but Joe ended up getting married and he left. So now I moved in Sarah. And you, we signed all the paperwork and added Sarah to the contract. Now the only people in possession of the unit are me and Sarah. And, every, and we've lived there for 10 years now, just the two of us, me and Sarah. And we're going to move out now. And you have to write us a check for our security deposit refund. Whose names do you put on the check? That would be me, Val. I forgot who all lives in the house. It's everybody that's ever been on the contract because unless that tenant gives you a 30 day notice in writing stating that they no longer live there and have no further interest in the property and hand you a key, they don't necessarily have to hand you a key, but they do have to tell you that they have no further interest in the property. That is the only time you can take them off of the contract. So when they vacate and my friend Sarah and I are moving out, you're going to issue me a check with all five people's names on it. It's my problem on how to cash that check, but you need to do that in order to protect yourself. Okay. <laughs> So if their name's on the contract, you have to keep it on the contract. Only the tenant can take it off. No, don't want to hunt them down. I mean, why bother? You can ask the people that are there to hunt them down, but don't, don't waste your time or energy. And here's the reality. In the event that I forgot who was living in the house now, me and Sarah? If me and Sarah don't pay the rent, you get to evict all five of us and go after all five of our credit. Got it? Makes sense? You don't want to release them. They want to be released, but you don't want to release them. Okay? That's how I want you to think about it. I know you have to put their name on there. I know you don't know where they are. I know you have no way to contact them. But in the event the people in your house go south, you can go after all the people that are named on the contract because you have a legal binding contract with them. They never told you that they didn't live there anymore and had no further interest in the property. So you have no choice but to name them, okay? Just saying, now you have more teeth because you have more people that possibly have jobs that you can go after to get the money that's owed to you. Starting April, business as usual, are the late payments and evictions reported to other agencies such as credit bureaus. That only happens in subsidized housing. So for right now, the people that are reporting that are in low income housing, just so you understand. If you provide low income housing and your tenant says that they want um, it on their credit report, you have to do that, but you can charge them a monthly fee. I believe the maximum you can charge them is an additional $10 per month to report that to the credit agency. 
And here's the reality. They're starting it. Let me tell you guys how this works, okay? Or this is how I see it working. They go to the little guy and they're only approaching this in low-income housing, okay? So those people that are on tax credit properties, things like that. And they ask them, we know you're trying to build your credit and correct your life. So did you want to, so they implement this law that says we as landlords have to do credit reporting agency to help them build their credit because they're paying their rent on time. They're in a tax credit property, blah, blah, blah. Well, here's what's going to happen. Over the course of time, somebody's going to get their nose bent out of shape because how come this only applies to low income housing, hear me out, and doesn't apply to everybody. Everybody should have a right to have their credit build up because they pay their rent on time, right? Why are they only allowing that to low income subsidized housing, people that are trying to fix their credit? They should be offering that to everyone. Once they offer that to everyone, we as landlords are going to have the tools to go put dings on people's credits when they don't pay their rent on time. So we'll see which way they want this to go. They're either going to have to open it up to everybody or shut it back down. Mark my words, it will come about, it will take a while, but somebody's going to get their feelings hurt that they can't have their rent reported on their credit report because they pay it every month on time because they're not low income, you're discriminating against me. You watch, it'll come out and then they'll either remove the program in its entirety because they're going to have to open it up to everybody. They're going to have to. Okay. So if they do that, is that going to make tenants happy? Is that going to make tenants mad? Well, I guess that depends on if it's a good paying tenant or a bad paying tenant. But you see how that's going to unfold down as it trickles through the system? I hope that all made sense to you guys. Because <clears throat> your people that are not in subsidized housing, I'll give you an example. They're renting apartment communities in Irvine, okay? They want theirs on their credit report too. You can't discriminate or exclude them, right? Paying attention? <laughs> So they'll either remove the program and totally or they'll open it up to everybody. And if they open it up to everybody and we as landlords can go put late rent payments and evictions back on credit reports, hit the easy button because we would have that capability. Chances of that happening are not very high. <laughs> they'll most likely shut it down. As soon as somebody that's not allowed to do that realizes that they're not allowed to do that, they're going to scream, you're discriminating against me, or you're giving them special privileges because they're low income, which is also discriminatory. Does this all make sense to you guys of how convoluted it works in the wheel that goes around? Do they really want to give us that kind of power? Just saying. <laughs> I would pay 10 bucks a month to put it on a credit report. I'd have my rent roll list and I'd be like, okay, let's call Experian and Equifax today. <laughs> Don't forget TransUnion. <laughs> but you see how it could get out of hand very quickly? I'm just saying, because of that, they're not gonna give us that power. You watch. Watch, I got so excited when I saw that. And then when they released that it was only for low income housing, it all clicked. It all clicked for me on why they were doing it and how it was gonna end, either end up going south or be even Steven across the board. And if they make that even Steven across the board, it won't last for long because we as landlords will do our job and it will piss off tenants. You watch. And we're the minority and they're the majority, so you watch. Okay. <clears throat> I The new guy didn't put up any deposit, but the deposit sticks to the house, Val. It sticks to the tenancy. Hi, Patty, question. Is it okay to write down on the check or money order payable to if the tenant has a hard time writing it? Yes. 
I've filled out checks for tenants and or landlords before based on a disability or some kind of thing along those lines. Um, it just becomes scary. I always make sure they sign it. I always make sure they have a receipt. I always try to be very, very careful um, with it. Um, I tell them I can't fill out the dollar amount because <laughs> I mean, come on, you gotta add some kind of a barrier there to help. I had a couple of landlords um, that were blind and it sucked <laughs> because I would send, I knew, not to send him a letter with his statement every month um, that I needed to call him if he had any deductions. Uh, because if I sent a letter, he knew what came to him by how many pieces of paper were in the packet. And he's like, Patty, I, I usually get seven pages this year. This month I got eight. Do you know why I got eight? And I'd be like, no, hang on, let me look. And I'd have to go back through and see, did I write you a letter? I'd have to count the pages that were in his statement. And then I found out that my corporate office was inserting flyers and things, you know, inviting them to invite their friends for property management. And I'm like, no, you can't do that to this owner, please. <laughs> so yes, I see how it could be a problem, um, but yeah, it's gonna be a nightmare. You watch. Yes, low-income housing is, uh, is, is so, oh my God don't get me going don't get me going um i have my own opinion on section eight too <laughs> and i'll i'll say that to you guys here shortly let me just see discrimination is everywhere rumors say government is building 700 brand new homes only for afghan refugees why wouldn't they build them for the new refugees with the new war i'm just saying um Yes, they take priority over our vets, our homeless, et cetera. Total discrimination, if true. I couldn't agree more. It's bureaucracy and bullshit at its finest. Section eight is a nightmare. Yes, it is. Um, uh, here's, here's some things I can do to help you guys when dealing with section eight housing, okay? Uh, in the event that you're screening as the landlord and them as the applicant, you have a right to call their section eight worker and ask to see what's in their case file. Wait, what did Patty say? If you have a prospective applicant that is on section eight, you have the capability of contacting their Section 8 caseworker and asking what documents are in their case file. In other words, did the property manager before you do their job? Did every time they serve a notice to the tenant, did they also give a courtesy copy to the Section 8 worker like they're supposed to? Because in the event the landlord in front of you did their job, that file could be this thick, full of three-day curable breach of covenants, non-payment of rent notices, God knows what. But if you don't ask, you'll never know. They can provide info. You can ask them to see if how many late payment notifications are in their case file. They don't get special privileges. <laughs> just because they're on section eight. Love you guys. You can legally do this. You can ask them for information obtained in their case file. They have to tell you when they got on section eight. You interview them like a landlord. You get it? Like a previous landlord. When did they acquire Section 8 housing? How long have they been on their program? Have they ever received any notices that they were in violation? Do you have any noise complaint violations in their file? I think some of you guys are just going, oh my God, my head hurts. She just opened up a whole new window for us. <laughs> I hope that helps you guys. I really genuinely am here to help you. 
So keep that in mind, okay? You do have a right to contact their worker and ask them what's in their case file. You can't just say, show me everything that's in their case file, but you can ask questions like, <laughs> did they have any noise complaints? Did they have any non-payment of rent notices that were served? You guys are like all, hmm, <laughs> where were you last year, Patty? <laughs> Dealing with COVID. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm being an ass now. Don't, don't quote me to that. <laughs> so you do have that opportunity. Utilize it whenever you're dealing with Section 8. <clears throat> oh, now I see all the things. Good idea. That's genius. Does the noise complaint, must it be with police? No, no, no. What I'm talking about is if they serve them a three-day curable breach of covenant based on noise, okay? Example, um, they're affecting the right to quiet enjoyment by playing their TV at 11 o'clock at night so loud that it's affecting other neighboring residents. So if they wrote a cure or quit notice based on that violation for noise, it would be in their file. If the property manager before you did their job, it all is based on if the property manager before you did their job. So keep that into consideration. Everybody that manages investment property doesn't manage it the same way that you do. So they might not have notified Section 8 every time they served a notice. Hell, they might not have served a notice. They might have wrote a little nasty note. Who knows? <laughs> but you do have the opportunity to ask what kind of information is in that file. Did they receive their security deposit back in its entirety from their previous residence? That manager is not gonna be able to ask that, answer that question because they aren't given that type of information. A disposition of security deposit usually doesn't go to section eight also, um, but it's a good question to ask. Sometimes you might get a new section eight worker that doesn't know what they can and can't say. <laughs> And then remember, you guys, um, do not disclose any information for a tenant that vacated during the pandemic period. Remember, if it happened during COVID, it's nobody's business. So if someone's inquiring, hey, did this tenant pay? You zip it. We don't discuss what happened during the COVID pandemic period. Did you have any other questions for me? Be very careful not to tell a new landlord asking about a tenant what happened during COVID in the property because you cannot tell them they got the government money and didn't pay me. If they were affected, they're protected. So you can't talk about what happened from March 1st of 2020 to the last day of this month. And in LA County, you can't talk about what happens until the end of the year after that. Okay, so remember that don't disclose anything that happened during the pandemic period. And you can tell them that verbatim. I'm sorry, I don't discuss things that happened during the COVID pandemic. Did you have any other questions for me? Because you can't, you can't disclose what happened during the pandemic. If they didn't pay the rent, if you had to evict them, if you had to apply for government funds, you can't discuss any of what happened during COVID with another landlord that's inquiring. You cannot, don't do it. It's considered retaliatory. Just don't, it's a bad idea. So the noise complaint doesn't need to be with the police. When I get a formal request from a property manager and the paperwork asks for late info, do you just strike that out? When I get a formal request from a property manager and the paperwork asks for late info, do I just strike that out? No. <laughs> First and foremost, I never answer those in writing. Because if you give a wrong answer, you did it in writing. <laughs> I know what you're talking about. It's for a reference from a previous tenant and they send you that little thing to fill out. I never fill that out. I always call them. Everybody got that? Don't fill that out, call them. If you fill that out, you put bad information, wrong information, whatever in writing, that's bad. 
You don't want to do that. Phone call, <laughs> not in writing, <laughs> could be considered hearsay. Um, but I always answer on the phone. I don't ever answer in writing. Um, if you get asked the question, would you rent to them again? The key answer there is if they qualified. Because the reality is you have to rent to anybody. If they qualify, you can't discriminate. So that's the answer to that. Um, let me see. Val, I know you're asking a bunch of questions. Let me go back. No, I don't strike out late info. Think about it this way. It, it'll say, how many times were they late in the last 12 months? I just don't answer that question. And I tell them, I'm sorry, I can't discuss what happened during the COVID pandemic. They lived here from this state to this state. Their starting rent was this much. Their ending rent was this much. Did you have any more questions? Got to be very careful about what comes out of your guys' mouth. I'm not too worried about you asking the questions because it's the person that's giving the information that's going to get their pants sued off of them. So that's why I'm telling you guys, I, if you ask it, I, I think your exposure is much less. It's if you give the information, all of that exposure is on you and it's bad. Don't do it. So, I mean, I would just conveniently say, I'm sorry, I don't discuss what happened during the protected period, transitional period. We gotta remember all these periods now, right? I just don't talk about what happened during COVID. Do you have any other questions for me? Keep it simple, okay? But do not give out private information that happened during the COVID period, okay? Don't do it. And you could tell the person on the other end of the phone, I'm not going to give you any information of anything that happened during COVID. We can't. We're bound by law. It's retaliatory if you discuss it. It could be considered retaliatory and none of us need to invite lawsuits to our front door. Knock, knock, here comes another one. Yeah, no thanks. Don't be signing up for that. <laughs> no, 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 we don't want those. <laughs> Just say it. And for those of you that have something on your application and please go in there and add rents that are still owed to you. Don't just think, oh, they're working on it and leave it alone. No, go back in there every month, add all those rents that are still owed to you. Um, and if you get a status of your application as denied, contact your legal counsel. Chances are you're going to be able to evict right away. <laughs> um, if it says denied, funds exhausted, inactive, or non-responsive, chances are you're going to be able to evict. Chances are. Okay. Does anybody have anything else? Oh, Val does. <laughs> if they were good tenants, I should say yes or stick with the excellent answer or if they qualify. Well, I'll tell you this right now. <clears throat> Years ago, BC, before COVID, not Christ, BC, before COVID, um, <clears throat> whenever it was like an un, unspoken code between property managers that when you were asked, would you rent to them again? And the response is only if they qualified. It was a way for us as managers to tell the other manager they're nothing but a headache, but I can't, you know, only if they qualify. It was like an unspoken code between property managers of these people are a problem. So keep that in mind, okay? Most independent landlords aren't aware of only if they qualified, okay? <laughs> so if a property manager tells you that, Yes, Val, exactly. It's kind of like, bless their little heart. <laughs> Same concept, only if they qualified. So if you have a professional property manager telling you only if they qualify, you might want to look into that a little bit deeper, <laughs> okay? Because they're not going to tell you. They can't tell you. But it's kind of us telling each other, watch out. <laughs> Looks good on paper, not so good in person.
What other tips can I tell you guys? I got all kinds of tricks. <laughs> Only if they qualify. Because we couldn't say, no, we're evicting them. They're, they haven't paid us in months. We can't say that. Evictions don't show on credit reports. Now what do we do? Shit. Neither do money judgments for landlord tenant debt. I'm sorry, as per my legal counsel's instructions, I don't answer that question. If you guys ever need verbiage, call me. I got verbiage for days. Most of it is, no bullshit, you're not speaking in absolutes. <laughs> No joke, I'm, I'm serious, no absolutes. And it just flows. I mean, once you've been involved in the industry so long and you know all the weird stuff that gets thrown at you, tenants will twist around something and throw it at you in a different direction. And I'll be honest with you, it's not just tenants, folks. For those of us that professionally manage property, a landlord on a mission can also twist you up and tie you up, trust me, just with the verbiage. Um, I remember getting off the phone one day with, a, I don't remember if it was a landlord or a tenant. And at this point, it, honestly, it don't matter. Um, I had to call the attorney to say, well, I didn't call the attorney. I just called a coworker. How many days do we have to refund a security deposit? <laughs> they tied me up with so many questions and threw it at me from such different angles. I couldn't answer the question. How many days do you have to refund a tenant's security deposit? So I'm human too. It happens to me too. So now I've just learned to use my fogging techniques and not speak in absolutes to a level that's just, it's automatic. It just flows right out of my, my mouth all day long. <laughs> it's weird. So if you guys need verbiage, ask me. I usually have a whole arsenal of it. <laughs> Um, here's the reality. You don't want to just say no. You don't want them to say that you discriminated against them or that you didn't do whatever they're asking. Okay. So I would say I'd be more than happy to answer your questions, but I can only give you limited information. Oh, why is that? It's our company policy. I can tell you, yes, they lived at the property. I can tell you the rents that they paid. Anything else would be considered a personal opinion and we're not allowed to give that. I, again, if you guys want verbiage to get away from this stuff or around it, I got it for days. <laughs> I'm not slick. I've been doing this shit for a long time, okay? And in all reality, you guys, I learned most of this the hard way through blood, sweat, tears, lawsuits, whatever. I learned a lot of this the hard way. I don't want you to at least get in my brain and use my knowledge that I'm not using at the moment so that you don't have to learn the same way that I do. Okay. <laughs> I'm one of those people. Don't touch that. It's hot. Don't touch that. It's hot. Okay. Let me touch that. Oh, now I know what hot means. Okay. Got it. <laughs> Understand? I just don't want people to make... Let me, let me rephrase it this way, because I like this way. I will ask or answer a hundred questions for you every day if I have to, but I don't want to deal with one problem that's so stupid because you didn't ask me the question. I'd rather answer the question than deal with a stupid problem. Make sense? And I will. You ask Val, you ask anybody out there, I will answer your questions all day long, all day long. I might tell you, okay, that one's a dollar because everybody has their thing. If I had a dollar for every time and we all have our thing of whatever that is, mine is, excuse me, one more question. <laughs> so I always say, that'll be a dollar. That'll be a dollar because that's my thing. One more question. Okay, you guys, I'm in. <laughs> oh, thank you, you guys. I couldn't do this without you. And, and that's why I started this is so that you guys could get solid information, good answers, and hopefully some assistance with some of your trials and tribulations. I mean, that's why I'm here. I want to share my knowledge. You know, I want to help you. 
So you guys reach out to me, contact me if you need to. I'm going to go ahead and end this for today unless anybody has anything else because this girl needs to go eat some lunch. <laughs> You guys have a wonderful week. Um, Tuesday, I'll be doing the Agla class on terminology that your attorney uses in simple English, if you guys need that. Um, and we'll be back with Wednesday with Widget on Wednesday um, next week, in case you guys have anything else that arises. Pray for lawsuits. I don't want any lawsuits. <laughs> well, yeah, we do. We want Agla's lawsuit. We want them to annihilate the county of LA's current moratorium or COVID extensions, whatever you want to call it. I wish they would. And I'm going to be extremely honest with you. I'll be shocked if they can get anything to come to a head before the end of the year. Think about it this way. I know Agla's suing them. Go Agla. But now they're in the court system. And we all know that. <laughs> Who knows how long that's gonna take? Who knows? We lost our right to a speedy trial. <laughs> Thank you guys. And I appreciate all of you. If you guys need me, you know how to hunt me down. I'm here for you. Um, and I will see you next week. All right, bye guys. <laughs>